guys, it's Cindy Leach, your polymer clay tutor, and today I'm going to show you how you can use up your old scrap canes for making cool Natasha beads. So, lots of times uh, people have concern about wasting their cane ends. Like you've made a polymer clay cane like this um, neat little uh, Easter lily cane, and when you've reduced it down, sometimes, depending on how good you are at reducing, you can end up with some scrap clay at the end. Well, you can take these neat pieces here and turn them into great looking beads and pendants and cool things. Let me just show you some of some samples. Now, when I was designing this Easter Lily cane, I had a bunch of little uh, sample canes that I was trying to figure out the colors and the exact design. So the canes didn't turn out how I wanted them to. So I had different ones left over and that's where I made these Natasha beads and Natasha beads are a name I th I'm assuming a woman named Natasha though I never have found her last name out came up with this uh, technique but it has sort of a, a mirror image look to it or an ink blot look or Rorschach I think it's called anyways it's quite a cool look where you've got um, a a mirror image on all the sides of the bead. This one was made with a scrap cane. Same with this one. One of my Easter Lily canes that didn't quite work out. Here's another one here using a little bit different colors and they're it's just this one's very graphic looking and that's a neat thing about using a cane rather than just scrap clay like a lot of people make their Natasha beads with. Um, and when you use a cane, you get um, you can get things like these lines in here that are consistent and quite cool looking. Here's one that I was really excited about when I cut it open. It has a little beautiful woman in the center of it. I mean, I have never seen it turn out this much like a woman. It's got she's got hair and arms and a dress and if you look carefully you can even see little wings on either side so it's really magical when you cut open um, these uh, samples when I sh well, I'll show you how to do it in a second but it's what you end up with can be very magical looking now these three down here are from the cane ends uh, of the Easter lilies that did work out so you can see how uh, beautiful and different these pendants and things have turned out this one here I mean it looks to me like um, like a water lily painting or something it's very cool and then uh, here's another one here with um, similar to the other one so it's got all the colors that uh, were in the cane now I'll I'm not going to go through a full tutorial here, but I am going to show you how these are, are made and how you can uh, use up your scrap canes. Now, I'm just going to take this uh, scrap of Easter Lily and I'm just going to kind of crush it down till I have more of a just a log shape. And it's getting kind of stiff. It's been here sitting in the studio for a few weeks. And I'm just going to warm it up and roll it out into a log. Now, like I said, some people like to use just uh, chopped up clay and you can get some really cool looks. But the neat thing about when you use a cane end is that this pattern is going all the way through to the end. So when you do this technique it can be quite neat looking. All right, so what we're going to do now is just start twisting the cane. And right now you can't see what's happening on the inside of it too much. We're just going to twist it and then kind of shorten it back up and twist it some more. And we're just kind of twisting up those insides of that cane. And I'm going to roll it on the surface here kind of smooth it out and maybe twist it some more. The more twisting you do, the finer the little lines will be and the more patterning it will get. And the more you kind of squish it and shorten it, the more it will sort of distort the inside. So there's no set rules, there's no set way of going about this. One thing I like to do is to get this sort of pointed look to it. You can do that by just uh, turning this into a, a bit of a, a teardrop shape 
by just rubbing the ends together here and we have a triangular piece and I like to do that before I cut it also I like to flatten it out a bit on all four sides so I get a bit of a uh, pyramid shape to it so I'm just going to keep going until I have these in a relatively pyramid shape and when we cut into this it's just really cool what happens I'm going to cut right down as very best I can right down the center so excuse my head here a sec while I try to get in here I'm going to cut right down the center and then when you split it open <laughs> this is so cool you need to match up these sides very perfectly as perfectly as you can and you get this wonderful wonderful pattern and when you have used a cane sometimes you get to see like this one has quite a flowery look to it because there was a flower on the inside of that cane if you were to use a different type of pattern say Oh, um, a checkerboard cane or, or some other type of pattern you would see repeats of those types of patterns in there and you would get some very very wonderful looks um, you can continue on to cut it two more times I'll show you you cut down the center of this side so I would I'd probably use that as a pendant or something like that but I can also cut down the center of this one I'll try not to get my head in the way and if you open that up again they match one more time see that so that whole side can match here I'll just set that to the side first cut down this other side the same way and this is where you end up with a bead um, all right so you have this this one you open up and match on this side like that and I'd be more careful and picky if I had more time and then on this other one it will match up on both sides it'll match up here as well as on this other side and you have to kind of fiddle around until you can get them all to match up perfectly but here you end up with if I'm spending a little more time you end up with a, a co uh, cone shape that has a mirror image here and here and here and here all four sides then you can smooth it out and and end up with a really really unique pendant so if you wanted to you could cut this in different sizes depending on the, the size you start off in the first place is how big your bead is going to end up but I just wanted to show you that that there is never such thing as waste clay even if it's at the end of your beautiful cane so you can use it up in all kinds of cool projects and um, and come up with these beautiful beautiful Natasha beads so I hope you enjoyed that make sure to press that like button if you found this helpful and fun for you um, my question is have you ever made a Natasha bead and um, have you ever tried making them with the cane before so leave the, that answer in the comment section below so I enjoyed being with you today and I will see you next time bye for now